Grace and peace to you this morning, and welcome to worship uh, for November 1st, which is All Saints Day, a sacred day in the life of the church where we uh, celebrate and honor and remember those uh, who have passed from this life to life eternal uh, throughout the past year. And uh, as we do that this year, it's a little bit different because for uh, many of those whom we remember, uh, we've not really had the opportunity to, to say goodbye in the way that we're accustomed to. And so hopefully this will be a moment when we can gather together uh, and be able to do that in, in a different way. Uh, if you are, um, if you're watching online, you may notice that we are, uh, you know, relatively speaking, dealing with a packed house here. I never thought I'd talk about 30 people <laughs> at the packed house, but it is today. So we're pretty much at capacity uh, right now. And so we're glad that you're able to, to join us and, and able to be here for this uh, really important day. Um, and I uh, know that there are many others who are watching online with us now. And uh, so we greet you if you're watching online as well and are glad that you've gathered to be a part of this community uh, in some way today. I'm going to invite you to hear now this call to worship for All Saints Day. Grace to you and peace from God who is and was and is to come and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings on earth. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all the saints. Amen. Well, passing the, the peace of Christ is done a little bit differently these days because we're trying to, to pass the peace of Christ and nothing else. So... I'll encourage you, if you're here in the sanctuary, to just simply turn from where you are and wave and share the peace of Christ to one another, and to wave at the camera as well, to share the peace of Christ with others uh, and those up in the uh, overflow section as well. And uh, as we begin, we'll, uh, we'll start with our children's moments today. So if you, um, we don't have any kids here with us uh, today, but I'll invite all of you kids who are watching online to, to gather with me on these steps for our children's moments. Morning, kids. You know, I was thinking yesterday about uh, when you know I was thinking yesterday on Halloween about you know the things that are scary, and thinking about you know we maybe we think about monsters or or darkness or something like that, but there are other things that are kind of scary too, right? Like starting a new school year where you don't know everybody in your class or you don't know your teacher, or starting a new school year like this year where you don't even know how it's going to go. Other things that might be scary, uh, your first time trying out a new sport and you're not sure what to do and you're not sure if you really uh, are ready for it. Think about how scary it can be to, to, to learn to play an instrument. Think about how scary it can be to go into a room where you're not sure who everybody is or what about, have any of you had to move before? Like move from one home to another for any reason? That can be scary because it's just something different and you're not used to it. Today, one of the things we talk, we're talking about is this story of these, these people uh, back in ancient times called the Israelites, and they were wandering through, uh, through wilderness. They were wandering through the desert. And for years and years and years, that had become their home. And even though it wasn't a great place, it was a comfortable place for them. And then all of a sudden, God said, I have promised to give you a new land to go into. And now's the time for you to cross into that land. And the people said, well, that's kind of scary for us. And so God said, well, I'm going to give you some people that will make it easier. And, and if you listen to the story that I'm about to read in Scripture, you'll hear about these people that made it easier by, by very literally holding God's presence up high so that others could be able to get into that place in, a, in an easier way and 
not be as scared. So what I want you to do today, kids, is think about people that help you to not be scared when you might feel that way. People who hold you close and tell you it'll be okay. People who bring God into your life by reminding you how to pray when you're worried or to be able to be calm when you're scared. It might be a parent, it might be a grandparent, it might be an aunt or an uncle or, or some other adult in your life. could be a teacher, could be another friend, or maybe an older brother or sister. Think about that person and how they help you feel safe and make your life easier and less scary. That's part of what today is all about, and that's part of what our scripture is about today, too. Let's pray and thank God for those people. God, we thank you for those who make life less scary. We thank you for those who bring you to us. We thank you for being with us in hard times. Amen. I'm going to invite us into our time of prayer this morning. There is there's a lot to think about and pray about these days, is there not? I'm going to encourage you to take a look at your uh, worship guide if you are worshiping at home and uh, have that pulled up or if you're here and you've got it on your phone or something um, and take a look or take a look later at all those who uh, are listed on our prayer list and so I'll encourage you to continue to keep those folks in your prayers uh, pray for our shut-ins as well I'm gonna uh, also invite you in particular to pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones this year, whether they're noted in the bulletin uh, or in the worship guide or, or not. Um, we know those who are uh, suffering from grief uh, on this day in particular, this All Saints Day, and so I'll invite you into prayer um, for those folks as well. Let us pray together. We will pray silently where you can lift up your own prayers for whatever it is that you feel you need to pray for today. And then I will close us with a prayer together. We know this story that we're about to read, even if we haven't read it yet. We know it because it's a story, Lord, about having to leave familiar and comforting territory. And we know that 2020 has been anything but familiar and comforting. We have faced just in the past seven months a global pandemic and economic recession and national conversations on racism and law enforcement. And this week we face an election that continues to divide and factionalize citizens from each other. And all of this and more, Lord, leaves us anxious and weary. We don't fully know, Lord, how we got to this place, wandering through wilderness. But we know that we're ready to cross over. We're ready for it to end. We're ready for that abundant and peaceful land which you have promised, one that flows with milk and honey, a land that sometimes seems impossible to realize these days. And even as we stand at the threshold of promised land, we know that more battles will be ahead on the other side. 
in all of this, Lord. We continue to trust in you and, and in your provision for us as our human institutions crumble around us, as we become fearful of our neighbors, we remember that you have created each one of us in your image. Regardless of skin color or voting record or any other superficial differences among us, we know, Lord, that the light within each of us comes from that same spirit, the spirit which you have given in abundance to each and we don't know Lord what is to come this week as we cross over but we do know Lord who has called us forward and that is you so help us to act as your disciples to be people rooted in love and compassion and empathy, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to listen to all those whose experiences we don't understand, and to seek your holy presence amidst turmoil and division and illness. And help us, most of all, Lord, to remember this week that no matter who wins or loses human elections you are still the one who sits on the throne and guides each one of us and only you are the one who has the power to save and so we pray at this moment in our nation for healing and reconciliation that is needed knowing that only by your power that will come to fruition Specifically, this morning, in this very moment in history, we name in our prayers candidates running for a public office, elections officials and poll workers, all who cast their vote or have already done so and deserve to have that vote counted, frontline workers who sacrifice so much to keep us safe in a pandemic public health officials and researchers working hard to contain and eradicate COVID-19. People of color who endure systemic injustice daily in ways we don't understand. And law enforcement officers who fulfill their duties to protect and serve all citizens. We pray for the people we've lost this year due to COVID, due to police brutality, due to protests turn violent and we pray for the people we've lost in our own community of faith our saints who we remember today by name and in our hearts and it's those saints and more that we give thanks for today the ones who stand in the riverbed for us the ones who hold your presence aloft for us in order to make our journey in this life just a little bit easier. Most of all, Lord, we give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to be a holy presence among us, who came to hold your glory aloft, who came to save in ways that humans cannot, who came to rescue us from our sinfulness, from our temptations, from our division and strife. We pray all these things in his name. As we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, and so we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Allow me to read this morning's scripture from the book of Joshua, chapter 3, starting in verse 7, and continuing on into chapter 4. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to make you great in the opinion of all Israel. Then they will know that I will be with you in the same way I was with Moses. 
you are, com- you are to command the priests who carry the covenant chest. As soon as you come to the bank of the Jordan, stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the Israelites, come close. Listen to the words of the Lord your God. And then Joshua said, this is how you will know that the living God is among you and will completely remove the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites before you. Look, the covenant chest of the ruler of the entire earth is going to cross over in front of you in the Jordan. Now pick 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one per tribe, the soles of the priest's feet who are carrying the chest of the Lord, ruler of the whole earth, will come to rest in the water of the Jordan. At that moment, the water of the Jordan will be cut off. The water flowing downstream will stand still in a single heap. The people marched out from their tents to cross over the Jordan. The priests carrying the covenant chest were in front of the people. When the priests who were carrying the chest came to the Jordan, their feet touched the edge of the water. The Jordan had overflowed its banks completely the way it does during the entire harvest season. But at that moment, the water of the Jordan coming downstream stood still. It rose up as a single heap very far off, just below Adam, which is, next, which is the city next to Zarathon. The water going down to the desert sea, that is the Dead Sea, was cut off completely. The people crossed opposite Jericho. So the priests carrying the Lord's covenant chest stood firmly on dry land in the middle of the Jordan. Meanwhile, all Israel crossed over on dry land until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. The entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan. The Lord said to Joshua, Pick twelve men from the people, one man per tribe. Command them, pick up twelve stones from right here in the middle of the Jordan, where the feet of priests of the priests had been firmly planted. Bring them across with you and put them down in the camp where you're staying tonight. Joshua called for the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one man per tribe. Joshua said to them, cross over into the middle of the Jordan, up to the Lord your God's chest. Each of you lift up a stone on his shoulder to match the number of the tribes of the Israelites. This will be a symbol among you. In the future, your children may ask, what do these stones mean to you? Then you will tell them the water of the Jordan was cut off before the Lord's covenant chest. When it crossed over the Jordan, the water of the Jordan was cut off. These stones will be an enduring memorial for the Israelites. Let's pray. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Amen. What a fascinating story, isn't it? What a fascinating story about these Israelites who, you you may recall, were uh, freed from slavery only to wander in the wilderness for four decades. And now had come the time to enter the promised land, the land that God had promised them. And in this moment, Moses, their fearless leader, has died, and Joshua has arisen as a new leader for a new time, and God is giving instructions for them. And these are the instructions that he gives, and this is what happens. Essentially, What God says is take 12 priests, one from each tribe, and send them into the water carrying the Ark of the Covenant, which to them signified the presence of the Lord with them. Take this ark that reminds you that God is with you and take it into the water, and when those 12 people hike up their robes and walk in, the riverbed will go dry. And all the people can cross over on dry land. It's not the first time that this has happened, is it? If you know the Exodus story, this was another, that was another time that they were able to, to, to cross over on dry land through a riverbed. But now they are doing it with these 12 people literally holding God, God's presence high for others to see. And imagine if they've got thousands and thousands of people crossing over, how long they must stand and hold this heavy Ark of the Covenant above their head. 
those 12 people were true servants. Those 12 people helped others to cross over more safely and more easily into a land which God had promised. Those 12 people were remembered not only by the documenting or the recording of this story in Scripture, but remembered also by those Israelites with stone memorials gathering up 12 stones, one for each person, which represents one for each tribe, so that in the future, children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and people of generations ten times over can ask, why are these stones here next to the Jordan? And some elder can say, well, it's because, and then tell the story of how 12 people served and sacrificed and got their feet wet so others wouldn't have to. It's a powerful story that reminds me of the importance of why we have memorials in uh, our world. It's why to this day we still build memorials. We build war memorials, some of them in, in our nation's capital and some in our own communities to remember those who sacrificed their lives in service of country. We, we have these memorials of people who have fought for civil rights and, and in some cases lost their lives for civil rights, such as the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial or the Civil Rights Memorial in Montgomery. We have memorials that we construct to remind us of civic heroism and bravery, such as the Flight 93 Memorial in Shanksville. And on a much smaller level, we have memorials within the church. Oftentimes, but not always, tangible items that have been purchased and are utilized in memory of someone who meant something to the people of this congregation. Sometimes it's monetary gifts given for ministry, and other times it's setting up endowments or investments by major donors, some of whom did so as part of their estate plans. People who piled up stones so that we could remember and that we could move forward. Memorials remind us that we don't get to where we're at in life on our own. What happens is that in some form or another, when we place a memorial somewhere, what we're saying is that here are the people who stood in the water for us. Here are the people who got their feet wet, which enables us to cross over on dry land. And this is a perfect story for All Saints Day. A day when we think of the people who helped us cross over. Because we know that each one of us in our lives has a time or multiple times when without other people around us to support us, to strengthen us, without other people around us to bring God's presence into our lives, we would be drowning. And so we need others on this journey of faith when we are crossing over into a new job or into marriage or crossing over into separation or divorce, when we cross over into going away for school or moving away from home, when we retire and must cross over into that new reality, when we have crossing over moments where we have to get used to no longer being as healthy as we used to be or no longer as sick as we used to be when we cross back over into health. When we suffer the death of a spouse or of a parent or of a friend or someone close to us who crosses over into life eternal, we are left crossing over into a life where we suddenly feel their absence. We cross over into life with Christ, and indeed we go through water, baptismal water, to do so. And in that moment when we are baptized, there are others that hold God's presence high for us to see. 
in this year, have we not had crises and challenges aplenty? Have we not spent this whole year crossing over, letting go of what once was familiar, even if it wasn't great, but not yet being able to see the promised land ahead? We all have moments in life. Sometimes it's a collective moment, like this year. Sometimes it's personal for each person. It's different. We have moments where everything changes and we have to adapt to new circumstances, new land, new life, new territory. And when we have those crossover moments, we remember the people who helped guide us from the old reality into the new. These are our saints. These are our people standing in the river, making it easier for us to cross over. And we know that they may or may not go with us into the promised land, but either way, they helped us to get here by reminding us of God's presence. One of the tragedies of this year, as many of you know even more deeply than I do, is that we haven't been able to conduct funerals as we'd like. Some of these church members we're about to remember today and others we remember have not been given the proper goodbye that we're accustomed to because of the pandemic. And so our grief has been made harder. For still others, the isolation and loneliness we feel is made even harder by the absence of your spouse or parent or friend and the limited nature in which care can be given to you. I can't tell some of you how much I wish that I could have sat and visited with all of you in your homes over these past seven months as you continued to grieve the loss of these people together. I wish that we could receive care and give care in the way that's deserved and have had the funerals that, that these loved ones deserve. This pandemic has taken away a lot of what we need to process grief and loss. But you know, just as the Israelites piled up stones on the banks of the Jordan, we have a need to ritualize and memorialize the loss of those we love. And while we've lost many of the rituals surrounding grief and loss, we have today. This, this day, this All Saints Day is a blessing in that way because we still have this ritual that we do each year to remember the saints, the people who helped us cross over into better land, who helped us to see God's presence and path more clearly, who surrounded and supported us when in our lives we had to cross from familiar deserts into an unfamiliar new land. Saints who hiked up their robes and trudged into the river and got their feet wet on our behalf. Today, especially, we honor and remember our Avery saints, the people who were members here, who were a part of us last year and are not a part of us this year. We remember Helen, that goofy, silly, crazy Helen Sumney, whose smile and laugh always lit up the room, who brought joy and levity into each one of our situations, who I heard stories of who she used to pile teenagers into her car, maybe even some of you, for youth group adventures. Laughter and fun can make crossing over easier to bear. I think of Jack, a man who dedicated his life to helping people get and stay healthy, who created a dry riverbed of crossing over from a trainer's table to the field, serving in a way that didn't give him glory so much as it led to others getting glory, a true servant's heart within him. I think about Carol, that caring soul who could always be found sitting right back there, serving in that kitchen upstairs or tending to her garden and being a friend to anyone who needed it. What a kind, compassionate person and what a blessing it was to have her nurturing presence when we ourselves would find ourselves in tra times of transition. And while we're talking about faithful, dedicated church volunteers, who among us can ever forget LMA Waters. A, a person whose impact in this church was felt in so many ways for so many years, perhaps most notably in her leadership with the United Methodist Women. 
And whether you were a friend of hers or a member of her family who she dearly loved, you knew that she was always that stabilizing force that gave solid footing when the river currents of life threatened to knock us down or the rain pounded on the roof as it is right now. We remember Larry Hitchon. Wasn't he such an inquisitive mind? If you ever sat in a Sunday school room with him, you, you knew that that inquisitive mind enhanced conversations in Sunday school. I knew him as someone who was always coming to me after, afterwards on Sundays to engage intellectually with sermons and whatever happened in worship, and someone who never stopped wondering how God could possibly be at work and still present in his life, even as he endured tremendous grief of losing his wife and then, a few years later, one of his sons. And, of course, we remember Sandy Dran, too wonderful dedicated servant who helped probably countless people in countless churches to grow spiritually, who contributed countless hours to United Methodist Women and to other caring ministries, who demonstrated compassion and empathy in abundance, who was always there to be a priest in the riverbed carrying the weight of the ark so that the journey for everyone else was easier. Now, these are our official saints today, but there are others on our hearts as well. And whether they've been named or not, all of these saints who we're thinking about right now were instrumental to the faith and spiritual growth of hundreds, if not thousands, of people both here in Washington and elsewhere. And more importantly, they were people who were instrumental to our own faith, who meant something to me or to you. And it wasn't because everything went well for these people. These people all had struggles in one way or another, which I think is what made them such great saints for us. Because they reminded us that life is sometimes a struggle, that life sometimes brings suffering because they knew the way through the desert so well, they were able to give witness to the God who leads us through it now. Through those wandering moments in the wilderness, through the moments of crossing over into the Jordan, or let's be honest, the conflict and the challenges waiting on the other side of the Jordan, Remember that the promised land didn't bring joy and comfort immediately to the Israelites. If you read the story... Yes, this was a momentous victory to be able to cross over into the promised land. It was a moment to remember, but it wasn't the end. Peace did not reign for quite some time. There were many battles still waiting for them on the other side. It's amazing the way that there are people in our world and in our lives that can stand strong in a riverbed of faith, not so that they can get glory, but so that they can help others find God's glory. People who get their feet wet so we can cross over on dry land so that we can gain inspiration and comfort as we make it through our own journeys. What a year it's been. It feels to me on some days in 2020 that we've spent the whole year in the Jordan River, it, that the riverbed wasn't quite as dry as we thought and we got stuck in the mud. And, and we look back at that familiar land and know that we can't get back to it, but we haven't yet figured out a way to get into the promised land. And all we're trying to do is just keep from drowning. And we're sure to face more battles even after we finish. And so it's important, especially in a year like this, indeed it is necessary to recognize that we are only able to stand on solid ground because of saints who hold God's presence up high for us. And it's important to be thankful for those saints that got us this far, today and tomorrow and every day. We've come this far primarily because God has placed people in our lives that got their feet wet so that we can cross over. And yes, we have a ways to go, but we know that we'll never have gotten this far without these tremendous saints, the saints of the cross. Thanks be to God and to those saints 
who held up the presence of the Lord in our times of need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, as we name and remember those who have passed from this life to life eternal in this past year, we're also going to have a moment after we read these six names, we'll have a moment uh, where we will remember the great cloud of witnesses. And so in that time, uh, when we get to that point, I will invite you to share any names of of persons who were saints to you and to just uh, speak them out loud uh, in that time. Uh, Anyone who you are grieving today who has not already been named will invite you to share that in that moment. As each name is read or shared, we will have a chime uh, to remember their presence with us and their continual presence spiritually with us. Uh, Sammy will help us with that, as well as uh, we're going to be lighting a memorial candle for each of our six folks. And uh, if you are family who's here today uh, of we will invite you to to take that candle home with you today as a remembrance today in our hearts we remember Helen Sumney We remember Jack Ray. We remember Carol Arford. We remember Ella May Waters. Larry Hitchon. We remember Sandra Sandy Dran.
I have a couple of additional names to share with you, and then I'll invite you to share by speaking out loud any names that come to mind for you. We remember Marlene Stainbrook. We remember a dear friend and colleague of mine, Tom Kennedy. Are there others you wish to remember? Just speak them out loud. these persons, and we remember all who are part of the great cloud of witnesses whom we name in our hearts today. Let's pray together. Lord, on this holy day, we recognize that not all moments of worshiping you are joyous. Some bring pain in our hearts and feelings of grief and loss. We are sad to feel the absence of these persons. And yet, O oh Lord, we are also thankful. Thankful that you made and created them. Thankful that you shared them with us. Thankful that they held your presence up high for us. And indeed, at least in that reality and in that truth, we are overjoyed by that blessing today. And so we remember these and all the saints who now from their labor rest and rest with you in eternal glory until we one day are able to see them again. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
are many ways in which we worship the Lord, and one of those ways is by offering our gifts, uh, making tithes or offerings to the Lord, as has been commanded to us by Scripture, and as we freely and lovingly wish to do to demonstrate our thankfulness. In this month that we begin today of gratitude, we are exceedingly grateful as a church for those who have continued to support and sustain the ministry of Avery UMC. And in this month of gratitude, what better time for us to be able to offer up our thanksgiving to God for all that God has blessed us with. So I'll invite you to offer yourselves and your gifts to God. There are a couple of different ways we do it now. If you are worshiping online or even if you're here in uh, the sanctuary in this moment, you can always uh, make a, a gift online through our website. If you're here and you have not already utilized the offering plate in the rear of the sanctuary, you may use this offering plate that is just to my right uh, your left as you exit as you will be exiting this front door you can use that plate uh, to, to offer up your offering to the Lord let me pray over our offering God you have blessed us so wonderfully and abundantly with these saints. You have blessed us by enabling us to continue ministry as a church in a tough year. You have kept us safe thus far. And so with these tithes and offerings, O oh Lord, we are not just going through a ritual. Lord, we wish to hold your presence and your glory up high in our lives. We wish to demonstrate to you that our ultimate trust is in you and not the institutions of this world. We worship you with our gifts that we give so freely and sacrificially, knowing that it will help us to keep you lifted high in our lives. May these gifts be used for your work and for your will and ultimately for the good of your kingdom. Amen. As we close this morning, I do have a few announcements. As I mentioned, because I know a lot of you, this may be the first time you've been here um, in the last several months. Um, for, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, as I mentioned, we will be departing through this door. And what I'll be inviting you all to do is um, to have this side empty out first. Uh, and then that side can empty out as well. If you um, have a jacket or anything that you need to loop back around in, you can do that but we're just trying to keep the traffic flow a little bit um, safer if we can. So um, I, I also am going to invite those of you who are here in the sanctuary to stick around after the benediction for just a moment. Um, I need about three minutes of your time to help us uh, work towards uh, uh, something in the next couple of months. Uh, I, I do want to let you know that you know, now that it's the, the beginning of November, Christmas is like right around the corner, and it feels maybe too early to talk about that, but we've got some announcements uh, in our worship guide, which if you get it emailed to you, um, the, it'll be in there. It also will be in the newsletter that you, some of you received coming in here today. Some of you get your, your uh, newsletter emailed to you or mailed to you, and it will be coming in the mail if it's not already. Uh, in there are a lot of details about what we're planning for Christmas. We're planning some different things, uh, and so some of those are already underway, and we encourage you to, to be aware of that. The, the biggest thing that I want to let you know now is that we're going to be working on uh, what we're calling Home for Christmas boxes, which will enable you to follow along in worshiping and growing spiritually at home. 
Uh, and it's going to be for people of all ages, and it's going to have lots of different things in it that will enable you to follow along through Advent and Christmas as a supplement to watching worship online or attending worship in person. And so there are going to be some ways to order those in the coming uh, days and weeks, and so I'll invite you to look out for those Home for Christmas boxes that we are putting together. I'm hesitant to give a benediction because I'm hoping that maybe I can wait for the rain to stop, but it doesn't sound like it will stop anytime soon. So I'm going to have to at some point dismiss you all into, uh, those of you who are here anyway, into, um, you know, the, the blessings that are raining down on us quite literally <laughs> uh, in this moment as we hear it. But I invite you to go now remembering all of those people who have helped you cross over. All those people who held the presence and glory of God high so that you could see it and feel it. And remember that God of all grace, who calls all of us eventually, as he has called some of us already, to his eternal glory. And until then, the one who will restore, support, strengthen, and establish each and every one of us. To God be all honor, glory, and power forever and ever. Amen.